So in this video, I want to go over the Zidoof platform. I'm going to cover the unboxing of the Z1000 Pro, and, and then I'm going to go into how I set it up, which is pretty easy, and then I'm going to go into the the user interface, pretty much concentrating on the picture wall uh, app, which is basically where all your movies are stored. So I do plan on releasing a, like a, a separate like review video where I kind of like distill all my thoughts into like a slightly shorter video. This is more like a, more of a detailed. I'm going to show you everything about the platform kind of video, you know, but stay tuned. Uh, I'll be releasing a shorter video, which kind of distills everything into just my thoughts. So as you can see, this is the box that uh, the Zidu Z1000 Pro comes in. Uh, it's a pretty sleek box, if I do say so myself. And um, yeah, uh, uh, minimalist, just black with some, you know, shiny lettering here. Or, and uh, so yeah, let's uh, open up the box and see what's inside. There we go. It's actually upside down. Here we go. Nicely packaged, good amount of foam here. So it looks like uh, in the box, I guess you get this box, this uh, smaller box with like, the, rem yeah, the remote. Um, looks like a power cable, which is grounded, which is good. And um, looks like an HDMI cable too. So include that as well, which is nice. But I have many of those. They also include a SATA cable uh, to connect uh, an external hard drive there. This actually has a bay for a 16 terabyte hard drive, which I'm probably not going to use. But uh, if you want an even more space. You can do, use this. The remote is pretty big. First impression here. I don't think it doesn't feel like it would. I don't think it comes with batteries. It doesn't weigh that much. So. But anyway, let's uh, let's go to the uh, actual device. Uh, first impressions is this thing is pretty heavy. Way way heavier than I was expecting it to be. Let's up, let me open it up. Getting out of the packaging, I won't bore you with that. Um, so, uh, first impressions, very, very solidly built. This is all metal, no plastic uh, that I can feel. Uh, very heavy. I don't know, the, I'll probably put the, the, the specs on there, but it's quite heavy. You have a little door to open to get the hot swap. Looks like it's hot swappable. Or you can put the hard drive in there, which is cool. I believe this display lights up here. You got a power button as well. I don't see any other buttons. And you got some USB 2.0 ports as well. Uh, so yeah, let's turn it around and see the back. I uh, have a composite cable, coaxial, uh, looks like digital audio, so digital optical uh, audio. You have the uh, HDMI in, HDMI out. There's a LAN port here. You have an RS-232 serial port for like home automation kind of thing. And obviously the uh, power plug inserter and then a on off switch. And it actually labels the off position, which is nice, and on as well on the other side. I don't know if you can see that there. It says on there. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely a high quality unit. Uh, and obviously a tiny little fan there for cooling the unit. It's probably useful if you keep it in a enclosed cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and set this guy up and test it and in this in this particular room because uh, um, I have a actual 4K. Uh, Sam 82 inch Samsung in this room and it's like the perfect It's a perfect TV to test it. it obviously Samsung's don't have Dolby Vision So I won't be able to test that if I hook it up upstairs I could I may I may be able to test it the TV upstairs does have Dolby Vision. So let's see what I can So the, yeah, this is probably gonna be more of a long-term testing. So this is like just the first step Okay, so I'm gonna run you through, well, I'm literally setting this up for the first time, so we'll set it up together. So next, um, uh, it's gonna ask you to do the zoom thing, but mine, and uh, if, you're, if your screen falls outside of the little corner borders there, then you gotta, you, should, you can adjust it here. So I'm gonna just keep going. Uh, we're in, I'm in the United States, the East Coast, so I'm gonna go to New York. And I already connected this to an Ethernet cable, so I'm good to go there. And 
So it's asking me to kind of how to connect the remote control. Never done that before. So let's do, I'm just gonna do exactly what it's telling me to do and see if it works. So I'm gonna hit the, looks like the page down button and the menu button simultaneously. Oh, it says point the remote control at the device within 20, 30 centimeters. All right. So, um, it says just press the buttons, but it should say press and hold the down and menu button simultaneously. And that's what got it to work finally. So I think we're good. So it says connected there. So I'm gonna go back and hit next. Um, I'm gonna go through, uh, I'm gonna do wizard mode cause that's probably, uh, it's probably the mode that most people are gonna do anyway. So but maybe I can do expert at some other time. So let's do wizard. Uh, so I'm going through a, I'm actually going through an, uh, I'm going through, I'm going to use the third option. I'm going through to a 2.0 AV receiver. So I'm going to hit next. I don't know. I'm not going to, I think that's fine, I guess. So that's it. That's, that's the setup. I'm just kind of going through the, uh, the system right now and it feels very, very smooth, uh, very snappy. Um, so poster wall, I think, is the uh, is the video, is where you find it, where your mo movies would be, uh, where the, is the movie interface. Uh, obviously, music player is plays music. You play your your online stored music on your network, and you can get more apps here. So I'm going to go on here and actually look for an update because that's usually the first thing I do when I get a new device to see if there is an update. So I'm going to all the way to the right to other, and I'm going to. Look for the upgrade button there and hit update and then i'm going to hit online update and see if there is so it's up to date which is good nothing to do there so i'm going to load up uh, i'm going to put some uh, load some videos on here and i'll show you how to do that in a sec all right so i'm going to hit uh x i'm going to hit the i hit the okay button to go to poster wall and then i'm going to go to sources i'm going to add a source and i guess I guess storage would be internal storage. SMB is what I'm interested in. It's actually going to scan my network and look for available stores. So I have a NAS with a WD NAS. It's founded immediately. I have a couple of, and I, and I have a, my server is actually called Media Room, which is my home theater PC. It's called Media Room. So it founded immediately. That's actually really impressive. Most, okay, so I got to input a password. So I'll do that a little later. So anyway, let me see if, uh, let me go back and see if Media Room needs a password as well. It does, okay. So as you can see, keyboard. As you can see, keyboard work. Here I'm hitting A and it's, it's recording it. So uh, there's a tip. If you wanna get through this quicker, just connect a USB keyboard to the, actually front panel, the USB connection and you can type and match faster. And as you can see, uh, it actually supports the mouse function, which is uh, another bonus. So get yourself one of these keyboards and it really helps the cinch, really helps uh, setting this up. I have a bunch of folders. I'm gonna start with my main folder, which is media. I guess if you hit the anonymous button, so I'm gonna go. So I added the movies as a source. So I'm gonna start scan there. And it's uh, scanning in the background. I'm gonna add, while that's going, I'm gonna add another source and hit an on, anonymous. And that seems to work. I'll start scan there. And now uh, let me finish up uh, uh, scanning, putting everything in, and then I'll come back. So when you, uh, when you boot up CDU, this is what you're gonna be met with. You can go into Media Center poster wall, which is where all the movies are, a music player. Uh, I haven't really gotten into the music player too much. I, I find it a little clunky. It's probably not, uh, out of the two, out of the poster wall and music players. So uh, the one I find uh, harder to use, and I really haven't really used that much. I don't have, I, I have a decent amount of, uh, uh, about 18,000 tracks or so, nothing too crazy, maybe 20,000. And it hasn't done, I tried, uh, I tried adding all my music that's on my network to it, but it's uh, it didn't scrape everything too well. But uh, let's go into poster wall because I think this is where 
the Zudu really shines. Um, as you can see, I've uh, it shows you at the very top, it shows you what you were watching. Recently, I got First Man, La La Land. But over here, you can go into uh, movies and it'll show you literally all of the movies that I have. I have about 1,500. And that would be, uh, this thing actually aggregates, if I have a movie that's in 4K and, and, and HD, it'll show you both of them. Like here in 1917, I have it, it says, it'll say 4K. And if you look, there's a, there's like a, see how I just made the 4K blue. You can also check out the, the 2K version. So I have 2K, I have two versions of this movie and, but on the very front of the cover, it'll show you like the highest resolution version that you have. So it's, in this case, it's 4K. Same for 2001, I have two versions of that movie. And in some cases, I even have three versions of a movie. Like if I have a 3D version, a 4K version, and a 1080p version, um, it'll just probably just show you the 4K version. But the cool thing about the front, if you go back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna go to, you can actually, Edit, if you hit the edit button, you can select different categories to add. So in this case, I added movies, TV. I took TV out. That's another story. I tried, I'll go back to TV in a second, but uh, you can do unmatch things that it couldn't quite scrape. Uh, as far as movies are concerned, it actually did a really good job scraping everything that I had. Uh, just, just a few stragglers that I had to fix and it's pretty easy to fix. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Um, you can select, uh, Thing, uh, 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 movies that have Dolby Vision on, in them. There's a board mode, which is kind of interesting, a bit of a gimmick, but at the same time, it's okay. Uh, Blu-ray, I'm assuming that means like full, uh, maybe ISOs. It'll show you what ISOs you have. I don't have any ISOs. I just have movies, uh, uh, full movies. You can do 4K and 3D. You can do children and watch sources, all that stuff. Um, sources, uh, I'm gonna go from here. Sources are, th th these are my hard drives that I have on my network. Uh, by far, my uh, movies has the highest amount of movies, you know, obviously movies that I have, almost a thousand on that one alone. And if you go down, I have, these are all the sources that I have. And it, as you can see, it's pretty much scraped everything. It, uh, I'm gonna show you how to fix uh, the ones I haven't scraped yet. Uh, Media 2, that's where I keep my TV, and I've tried. Zudu does not do such a good job uh, with matching TV. Uh, I have all my TVs like formatted. I have all my TV programs formatted for like uh, for Kodi or for Plex, and they all show up fine. But for some reason, this thing does not want to recognize. It only got, it only picked up about 800 out of 5,000 uh, TV show TV show episodes that I have. So it's a real, it's a mess. So I guess. I'm just gonna use this for as a movie player unless they fix the whole TV thing. And then maybe I'll add the TV later if they do something to, to address that stuff. But for now, this is an excellent uh, movie player. So I'm just gonna, this is gonna be my movie player. Again, this will play uh, full uh, full uh, 3D versions. In other words, it's none of this like side by side stuff. This is like legit uh, as, if, as, if you were, as if you played a Blu-ray disc in a Blu-ray disc player, this is the same. You're getting the full 1080p resolution. I think it's called, I forget the name of the term, but um, it's actually uh, called MVC, I guess. Uh, but yeah, these are these are all 3D movies. That I, have. I only have 37 movies, 3D movies, but uh, I'm hoping to expand this a bit more in the future. Uh, and uh, board mode is pretty interesting. It's basically like a random, you can, you know, hit the spin button and it'll, it'll find like a random movie and it'll play a little sound. Yeah, hey, then if you want to watch Evan Almighty, you can go down and hit play. You can go and hit play. If you want to watch it, it'll just start playing Evan Almighty. But I'm, um, and yeah. There you go, it's starting. Started playing it. So let's check out my 4K movies. I have about 186 here. And as you can see, if you go into the actual 4K movies, I don't want to just show you the 4K movie, even though I do have a, uh, a 1080p version of American Psycho 2, of, of American Psycho. I guess the posters and art, you know, it loads up relatively quick. I would say it's, it's quicker than Zipidi. It's still maybe not as quick as like uh, the Cody, but it's yeah, honestly, it's acceptable. You're scrolling down, it's kind of going, 
pretty good. I th and you know, the, all the art is stored within the device, so it makes it a little quicker for to get it going. Once once it's loaded up, it just kind of stays there, which is good. So let's. Uh, as far as Dolby Vision, I have not that many of a 18 uh, Dolby Vision movies here. Yeah, again, if you have movies ripped. Uh, then uh, that have Dolby Vision, it, it'll show up here, and, and I believe it, they have to be, have to, they have to be M MKVs, uh, unmatched. So let me show you how to match one of these real quick. Um, so if you go to let's see, Guardians of the Galaxy over here, I can if you if you long press on the remote, you can hit rematch, and then just hit here, and then come down here, and it'll show you the one. I believe it's Guardians 2, and then you hit OK. And then it just takes a second to save. Yeah, it's a little tedious to go in here, but uh, you know, to be honest, it really it really matched 98% of everything, 90, close to 99%, so it's pretty good. So one, maybe an hour of you know going in here and fixing all the ones that it didn't match um, would, would fix them all, really. So that's... Pretty pretty painless experience. I mean, obviously, if you go into movies, it shows you everything you got. Yeah, I can scroll down and it loads. Like I said, it loads pretty quick. And here you have recently added. You can go in here and it'll show you, you know, the newest movies that you've added. Um, so bas it basically takes your entire movie list, your entire movie, and it just you know uh, sorts it by newest to oldest, newest being at the top. So this is all the stuff that I've been add, added uh, recently to my network. So I'm gonna go down here and again, you can add, there's different, uh, you can add different uh, genres here. Uh, these are only a few, but if you go into the plus sign here, you can actually add a bunch more. You can do documentary, history, adventure, thriller. You can have a bunch of them on here. And I, I just haven't, uh, played with it enough, but I added the mo most important ones for me. Uh, so I gotta have sci-fi, gotta have action, comedy is good, and uh, you know I'll probably add documentary in there. But even though I don't, want, I don't watch a lot of docs, obviously. And you know there's a recommended list. So it'll just you know kind of give you some, you know, a couple of movies that maybe you should check out if if you want. Um, so let's go to the, you know, there's. Uh, Obviously, in each each of these uh, movie lists, you can go to the hamburger menu up here, and then you can make the you can make the uh, the art bigger, uh, or you can make it smaller. I'm gonna go back, and you can you can make it really small. I think that's as small as it gets. Actually, it gets even smaller. You can go. I think this is as small as it gets. This might take a while to load if you're if you're scrolling down, but man, if you want to get a lot of movies in, in your screen, then this kind of reminds me more of like the uh, like the Kaleidoscape look. It's very close because as, as you can see, it kind of gives you details there when you when you land on one. It's actually kind of a cool look, but on a, I do like the this the default uh, size is the one I like the most. This one's okay too, but I. This is the one I like the most because I feel like the, the art loads up nice and quick when you're scrolling. You can actually go here to the letters and just go, you know, if I if you go right to the letters, you can go to H, let's say, and then and then check out the Halloween collection or something like that and go to, you know, I got all my Halloweens here. I love how they aggregate everything together when, when it's possible. Not everything could be in a collection. I got the Gremlins collection over here. Um, so, I do like that. So I'm gonna go back to the hamburger menu and there's a, you can actually filter here. I haven't really, I haven't even gotten close. You can filter, you can be like, I just wanna see 3D movies. I wanna see, I only see what I haven't watched. You can filter by genre, you can filter by the year it was put out. There's so much stuff you can do with this. It's like the sky's the limit with this with this stuff. Um, let me go back. Yeah, so there, that's filtering. And if I go over here, I can go to settings. And here you have obviously you have child lock. I'm not going to do that. 
uh, have it set to, you can set your language for posters and have it set to English. Here you can kind of go into a little more granular stuff for, you know, select the amount of the details that you want on your poster. I currently have it set to medium and you can select what you want. If you want to have it just a clean look, you can just eliminate everything you want and just keep it like just with the, with the uh, poster. You can do all these preferences here. I just sort of, you can set, you know, the, have the Rotten Tomato, turn off the Rotten Tomato uh, rating. Um, there's a really lot of, there's, this is a really cool device, especially if you're a huge movie fan, which I am. I, 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 I'm always looking, looking out for like the holy grail of movie players. And man, this is definitely it. As far as like, you know, other than the Kaleidoscape, like if you have your own collection of movies, this thing, you're golden with this thing. And for 450 bucks, this is, this is a really good solution. Um, so I think we already checked out these, but yeah. So let's go to like the main, I'm gonna exit out and I'm gonna show you like the main settings here, how I have it set up right now. I have it set to in uh, auto frame rate. I got the, mat you wanna match, you wanna match frame rate and resolution. So if you're playing a 1080p video, It'll actually switch the TV out of 4K mode into 1080p, and vice, you know. And if you're watching a 4K video, it'll switch it. So you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna set this to both. I re I would recommend that. Default audio. I always, I left this on audio and auto. It's been working well. Most of my movies just have the like the main audio track anyway. Like that, I have it set to like maybe it's either True HD or Adobe or, or uh, DTS H, the DTS Master Audio. Or, or Adobe Atmos. It's just I usually have only one track anyway, but you can you can do first track. You can or you can set a like different language. There's a ton to choose from. If you have 3D movies and you wanted to play as 2D movies, you can. If you have if you only happen to have a 3D movie and you only want to watch it in 2D, you can do that. But you know most of everything I have on 3D I have in 2D, so I'm not really I don't really need that. Uh, here you can do, uh, if you if you want to watch a movie, uh, if you're watching a movie or a TV episode, you can just play the one and it'll stop it, but uh, if you have it play in order, it'll just play the next movie, I think. And for subtitle, I have set to off right now. I can just, you can just set the uh, subtitles on uh, whatever you want. Resolution, I have it set to auto, which is at uh, 4K or 380, 40 by 2160. And you can lock the resolution you want. I, I I'm not going to do that. I, I would I want the I want it to be able to switch out of uh, out of this resolution to play something else. And this is the you know this is the color settings I have. I have it set to the this color range because this is a, it's connected to a television, so it makes sense. And deep color, I have it open. I have it set to standard. It says um, it, if you look down here below. It says if the display does not support 4K 60 at 422, then use standard mode. I don't think my TV does support that, so I left it in standard mode, which, and it's been working okay. Um, HDR to SDR. This time I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna test this out and I'll probably show you a little later in the video or maybe in another video how this works. Um, but I'm gonna actually put this thing in my uh, theater room and because uh, I, I have an SDR projector and see how it does. But you can do that, you can set it to good bright or movie mode. And yeah, you can actually go in here and adjust it a little more. And, uh, when I left it in auto, for some reason it wasn't work, the S HDR wasn't working too well. Uh, it, was, it was switching to like f weird, like a weird resolution, like I think it was like 480, uh, 480p. So what I had to do was actually use this Dolby Vision thing and I have it set for uh, the VS Engine thing. So I have it set for HDR and, digital, and DV content. Um, because that, you know, if I have something in SDR, I want to see it in SDR. I don't want to like switch it to HDR or anything like that. That's what I would do. I just leave this set to raw. That raw means like pass through basically. So it'll, you want this set to raw. Just don't even, if you, especially if you, if you have it connected to like a receiver or a processor, leave this set to raw. You can just leave it at raw as well. So if you want to actually have, if you have a DT, if you have DTS Master Audio or True HD, you can you can kind of like fall back to like the to the core version of VTS or, or or Dolby Digital if you want, but obviously I don't want to do that. And I have it set to native sampling rate. This is more for like uh, 
you know, playing like, you know, high resolution audio, which I haven't really done. And this is only, it says only toggle this if you only have issues, if you have issues with your receiver and I haven't had any issues with audio. So I'm gonna go up to network. And you know, this, um, this has Wi-Fi. Uh, this will, you know, there's Bluetooth on you. I haven't really used this. I, you can actually use a Samba, Samba server because this thing actually, you can put a hard drive in here. I actually put a hard drive into my unit. I didn't find it terribly useful because you actually, in order to see the hard drive from your computer or from another location, you have to have the unit on all the time. And I'm more of like having a, I like having a centralized network and just having a random hard drive. If you, it, it's really great if you just want to have a collection of movies on this thing and this is your only source for movies, you can just stick an eight, you know, a 16 terabyte hard drive and have a bunch of movies on it. And that's where you, if that's all you're gonna play your movies from, I think it's awesome. And keeping the Samba server on, you can actually load your movies from your computer or whatever onto the hard drive without having to physically take the hard drive out, which is great. And it worked fine when I, when I, when the, when the unit was on. This is a viable option. It's not really useful for me because I like, I have an actual computer, like a server with all my hard drives in it. So this, I'm probably not even gonna use the hard drive in this thing. So I'm gonna actually turn it off. You can actually use the Wi-Fi antennas on this thing as like a, as a hotspot. So it'll like read as a, or I guess like maybe like an access point. So it'll like retransmit maybe like a Wi-Fi extender or something, but I haven't really used that. Uh, you can do HDMI CEC. So if you want to turn your TV on or something with this thing, you can, if you turn it on and that kind of thing. This shows, tells you how, I just have the fan, this is like, you know, if you have an uh, internal hard drive connected to it, it'll like, you know, set it to go to sleep automatically. And I had the fan control set to auto here and you can actually control the front display brightness. And I currently have it to bright. I, don't, I really don't care, it doesn't bother me. And you can actually, if you wanna, you can actually connect a keyboard to this. I just plugged any old like PC, PC keyboard into it and it worked fine. I tested it, worked good to me, it worked fine. So this basically, you know, that, you know, it's kind of a high level view of the of the whole main menu of this thing. Um, yeah, yeah, this is overall, I'm very happy with this, uh, with the Zidu. But anyway, uh, if you have any questions about the uh, Zidu, uh, Zidu or Zidu, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll answer them as best as I can. And uh, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel, it really helps a lot. And I'll see you in the next one.